In today's video, we're going to look at momentum, which is a property that all moving objects have. The main thing to know is that momentum is equal to the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. So if we saw a four and a half thousand kilo dinosaur charging at 12 meters per second, then its momentum would be 4,500 times 12. So 54,000 kilogram meters per second. Whereas if we had a 1,200 kilo car traveling at 25 meters per second, then its momentum would be 1,200 times 25. So 30,000 kilogram meters per second. An important thing to remember though, is that momentum is a vector quantity. So it has both a magnitude and a direction. So here, if we consider the forward direction to be to the right, then the dinosaur will have a positive momentum, but the car must have a negative momentum. The next thing to know is the conservation of momentum principle, which is the idea that in a closed system, the total momentum before an event, like a collision, is exactly the same as the total momentum after the event. To see how this works, let's imagine our dinosaur and our car as two particles, which are traveling towards each other and are going to collide, after which they'll both continue moving together at the same speed. How would we find their velocity after the collision? Well, the first thing we need to do is find their total momentum before the collision, which we can do by adding together the dinosaur's and the car's momentums. So 54,000 plus negative 30,000, which gives us positive 24,000 kilograms meters per second. Then because of our conservation of momentum principle, we know that once they've collided, their total momentum must still be positive 24,000. And remember that in this scenario, a positive number means that it's going to the right. So after our particles collide together, they'll both get carried to the right because the brown one had more momentum. And because they're both moving together, we can now treat them as a single large particle. So to work out their shared velocity, all we have to do is rearrange our momentum equation to show that velocity equals momentum divided by mass, and then plug in the values for this combined particle. So 24,000 divided by their combined masses from before, which would be 4,500 for the dinosaur plus 1,200 for the car. So 5,700 kilos which gives us a velocity of 4.4 meters per second to the right. So basically, after the dinosaur and the car collide, they'd both continue moving to the right at a velocity of 4.4 meters per second. Now, in some circumstances, the momentum before an event might be zero, like it is for stationary objects which don't have any momentum because they're not moving. And so in these cases, the total momentum after the event must also be zero. For example, if we imagine a gun before it's fired, then its initial momentum would be zero because its velocity is zero. However, once the gun fires, the bullet that flies out will have a momentum in the forward direction. And so to compensate for this, the gun has to recoil backwards with an equal momentum so that together the total momentum is still zero. So if we knew that this gun had a mass of two kilos and that a five gram bullet was fired out at a velocity of 120 meters per second, we should be able to work out the velocity of the gun's recoil. The key to this is remembering that the gun's momentum plus the bullet's momentum must equal zero because it started off at zero before the gun fired. The first thing we want to do 
is find the bullet's momentum using this bottom equation. So we do 0 0.005, which is its mass in kilos, times its velocity of 120, which will give us a momentum of 0 0.6 kilometers per second. Next, we want to try and find the gun's momentum. So again, we just do the mass of 2 times the velocity. But because we don't know what the velocity is yet, we can just write v for velocity. So the momentum will be 2v, where 2 is the mass in kilos, and v stands for the gun's velocity, which we're about to find out. Finally, we can use these momentum values for the gun and the bullet to rewrite our equation as 2v plus 0 0.6 equals 0. And then we can just rearrange this equation to find out the missing value of v. So first, we subtract 0 0.6 from both sides, giving us 2v equals negative 0 0.6. And then we divide both sides by 2, leaving us with v equals negative 0 0.3 meters per second, which is the gun's recoil velocity. And remember, the fact that it's negative means that it's effectively going backwards. Or in other words, it's going in the opposite direction to the bullet. The one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that you need to know that the letter symbol for momentum is rho, which looks like a p. So the momentum equation can also be written as p equals mv. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.